the first thing I would say, certainly if you're going to, going to do a trip with limited support, you've got to think about that. Yeah. You know, you have to think about contact. How are you going to contact the outside world, world if something goes wrong? Think about all the scenarios that could go wrong. You know, um, make sure you tell people where, where you're going to be, rough areas, where you're going to be at what times and have check-in times for when you're coming back. You know, it's sort of common sense stuff. Yeah. One of the things I had was a Garmin tracker. Okay, one of the GPS trackers. GPS tracker, which yeah. was a fantastic piece of kit because not only was it great for family, they could just go onto a website and see where I was in the yeah. world, uh, but also there's an SOS button on it as well. So if things go pear-shaped, yeah. as, long, as long as you've signed up to the right contract, you, you can push that SOS button yeah. and uh, they will arrange, you know, uh, sort of local search and rescue to come and get you. Oh, brilliant. So that is, yeah, and a satellite phone as well. Uh, absolutely vital and with, um, with that system just sorry sorry to cut you off there with that system do you is that worldwide like you sign up for that and then anywhere in the world you know whether you're in the amazon or the antarctic you press that button and they'll do their best to find someone in that area to come and find you yeah absolutely yeah uh, you've got to pay a, a monthly fee to yeah. that but what i like about it is you can switch that monthly fee off so if you're not going anywhere for six months, you can just switch it off. Yeah. You don't pay for six months. And then when you know you're going somewhere, you switch it on beforehand and you start paying again. That's brilliant. Uh, for that yeah, that's really good to know. Yeah, it's really good. And it's and as I say, it's just good for family. Hmm. Just, you know, while you're away and you can't phone them, they can just go online and there's a little blue dot that shows them where you are and where you've been. It's quite, yeah, it's quite yeah. cool, actually. No, that is good. Yeah. I mean, just living in Johannesburg, <laughs> we have one. In yeah. our, we have a, track, a GPS tracker in our car, and also my yeah. wife and I have a tracking app on our phones so we can see where each other are all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Not because we don't trust each other, but because, you know, shit happens, and yeah. you know, it's always nice yeah. to see where the other person is, or at least where their phone and car are anyway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. No, it's quite important. Um, in terms of kit, so think sort of tips for kit. Yeah. I mean, I found the the biggest thing is batteries. You know, the cold, as everyone knows, just zaps those batteries. So it's it's looking after those batteries in terms of battery management. You know how, you know, making sure you're charging at the right you know levels. You know, because you know what some batteries like. If you're only half charging them, yeah. they will they will zap quicker. You know, if you're not letting them drain, then charging them. You know, depending on the kind of battery. But you've got to keep them warm. And one of the things I found was I had a little uh, little shoulder pouch. So it would sit underneath a couple of my layers. Yeah. And I just put a couple of spare batteries in that. So it would sit underneath, almost underneath my armpit. Right. Well, they say that's the best place, that and your balls, to keep stuff warm, right? Exactly, yeah. But I didn't fancy walking around in a funny, <laughs> funny place. <laughs> Under the armpit was much better for me. Um, and that, that, was, that was, you know, that was pretty cool, um, just keeping it in there. Yeah. One of the things I found, certainly with a DSLR in particular, when your nose is right up against it, you know, mm. and you're breathing right up against your camera, that condensation just turns to ice almost instantly. You know, you've really got to be careful. Yeah. But, you know, so you have to sort of cover up on your nose or your face, anything that's going to come into contact with any metal part of your camera. Um, or, you know, and you've got to be careful when you're breathing not to get it in your viewfinder because it, it will just turn to ice and suddenly oh, your shit, viewfinder right. is like it's over. Yeah. So that's one of the problems, you know, that, that certainly I faced because I'm left eye dominant. Right. And the viewfinder, certainly with a, a you know, the video camera, the viewfinder's there, the body's here. Yeah. So yeah. I'm breathing, it's all going up here and it, it can freeze quite quickly. So you've got to, you've got to think about that when you're doing it. It's, so it's, how, how did you deal with that? There's two two ways you could deal with it is just sort of breathe through your breathe almost pushing the air away downwards rather than just breathing normally where it would come up your face or cover your face with some kind of you know buff or, or fleece. Hmm. But make sure you take that down when you're not filming because when you breathe on that, that'll just freeze over. Right. And yeah, suddenly yeah. thing will just stick to your face. 